Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Liddy of Jen Liddy Coaching and Development. And if you've been following my page, you know that I've been interviewing men and women who have made the leap from a comfortable job or maybe a not so comfortable job, but they were in a spot where they had something and they knew they wanted something more and they made the leap. And my job is to help creative people bring their ideas to life. And so I want to bring to you as many creative people as I know. And I happen to be lucky enough to know a lot of creative women. One of those creative women is Julie Costin. Julie and I have known each other for a few years. We met at the gym a long time ago and I've watched her go from a full-time tenured professor at Syracuse University where she was she is she was very very highly respected and she moved from that cozy position where everybody knew her and she was well respected to starting her own business that totally she runs now she left her teaching position i want her to tell her story but this is a great example of a woman who uh, knew that there was something more and that she could help the world in a bigger way and she took the leap to do it so i want to introduce you to julie costin so hi julie, jen thanks hi how are you I, I said before, you're, I love talking to you. Julie and I actually mastermind together because we have very similar energies and we have very very similar uh, uh, ways that we address things. But she's super like busy and important and she's giving me her time today. So thank you so much. You're so wonderful to do this. Thanks, Jen. And I want to say I'm so <laughs> excited to hear. In fact, someone just recently said, you know, Jen Liddy, you know, she, we're following her on Facebook. She's doing such good things in the world. So the, the confluence of our energies is really exciting. So thank you, Jen. Thank you. Yeah. So I would love you to tell everybody what you're doing. I, I'd love for you to start with what you were doing yeah. and now what you're doing currently. So give us that that, that leap. That leap. And I love that you're talking about as a leap, Jen, because literally on my vision board, my, my very favorite picture is of a person, it's a woman who's jumping from one rock to another and it's a really big leap and it says jump and the net will appear. And my mm -hmm. friend Lisa gave me this card and that's been exactly what it has felt like. So from a very cozy position um, at Syracuse University, and I loved teaching, I loved my students, I loved 95% of the job, um, and I got to this place in my life where there was this whisper, tap on the shoulder. So I should also say that while I was doing that, I was also consulting with school districts all over the country. And so I was kind of straddling two worlds in a way. Can you tell us um, what your expertise is? Sure. So the work that I do is all about inclusive education. So I help school districts and families really think about how to create inclusive schools. And when I say the word inclusion, I, I'm talking about kids, you know, with disabilities. I'm talking about students who are who we call outliers, right? So those gifted and talented students, students who have labels of disability, LGBT students, all students who, you know, Jen, when we were younger, were marginalized in all kinds of ways in schools. Mm -hmm. And so I help educators and administrators rethink schools to be places where every student belongs in a real way. Um, like, like in their own wing somewhere where nobody else goes. That's right. There's no wings. There's no rooms. It's really we're all together. And then I teach teachers how to reach the range of learners in every classroom, usually by making learning more fun and engaging, mm -hmm. which is um, it's just part of the, the, the work that I love. So I was teaching at the university and I was teaching teachers. And then so that was my full time job. And then I was consulting quite a bit. And in the back of my head, I kept thinking this might be something I just want to do. I just want to do this. Um, because every time I'd come home from consulting, I was like, I couldn't sleep at night, but in a good way, like mm -hmm. your mind is just working. I can't wait to help them with this and this and this and this. And I realized um, this is something I might need to do in the world. Um, and so I took that leap that we talked about. So I but took nobody that does that. What are you crazy? You had tenure, you had a salary, like nobody does this. I've, I've been talking to teachers lately and like, and professors, you're lucky to have a job. Who are you to leave? Right. Who are you to leave? There's something called insurance. There's something called uh, TIA craft. There's right. um, you, you're, my, you know, some of my loved ones advice is you're going to bankrupt the family. Like, you know, these kinds of things. Right. So it's like, um, uh, there's a lot of fear around the leap. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not going to pretend that I leaped without thinking about it for too long. 
<laughs> like mm-hmm. far too long, Jen. The last two years I should have gone because mm. it was in the back of my head, back of my head, back of my head. And I, it was fear that kept me there. Mm-hmm. And honestly, Jen, it was people like you that had lunch with me and people like you. And I have a lot of really good friends who are these really great thinkers. Um, and I'd have lunch and I'd say, do you think I'm crazy? I want to, I want to leave us to you. And, and they would say, I don't think you're crazy. Yeah. And uh, so those kind of people really helped me make that leap. I talk about this with my clients all the time. Like I really try to teach. And in my, in my marketing efforts, I really try to teach people uh, you need supportive people. And if it's not, if you're not going to hire a coach, that's fine. But surround yourself with the people who are going to say, no, you're not crazy. Try right. it. Right. Yeah. And I really am a unicorn. Um, and I, I realized about a year or two ago that I need to surround myself with unicorns. Mm-hmm. So people that can see the possibility in everything, people that are very positive in the ways that they think, people that are dreamers and doers kind of in combination. And so I really kind of asked the universe for my tribe. Um, and I'm not going to say my tribe is in place. Um, <laughs> But when I asked for that, more and more and more people showed up in my life that are just the kind of people that we want to surround ourselves with. Not the naysayers. So this was scary, and you uh, probably had people chattering, and your your people close to you, like you said, family members who were like, you're going to bankrupt us. Um, So why did you do it? Why is bringing this idea to life so important to you? Okay, well... You know what it's like to be passionate about something, mm-hmm. like helping people. And mm-hmm. for me, um, I've had many, many students with disabilities, right? And they have been misunderstood and not given opportunities to thrive. And so those human beings that are in my life and they're friends of mine and they're students of mine, and um, we've been wrong, we've been wrong, we've been wrong about human beings who have the label of disability in that we've always had these sort of decreased expectations in this concept of putting away separated, segregated settings. And um, so I did a lot of research in the, in the 20 years that I was at Syracuse University and, and before that too, and found out that guess what? When you include students with disabilities, they do better academically. They do better in life. And guess what else? We're all better for knowing people who are different. Mm -hmm. So I really want people to understand that disability is a difference. Mm -hmm. And just like we do diversity work, Disability is part of that. Um, and so it, it's like a deep, deep passion. I can't sleep at night thinking about kids that are in places that I'm not okay with. Mm-hmm. And so I do the work um, to help educators get there and, and support students in new ways. So when you have a passion like you do, <clears throat> it's very motivating. But it doesn't matter how motivated we are, our negative thoughts can get in the way. So I'm wondering that when you started to make this leap, you knew there was an itch. You wanted to make the leap. Uh, what were some of the troubling or painful thoughts that you that you struggled with? Yeah, fear is the first one. Um, and I'm going to just, you know, like I said, it held me back for a couple years. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a real wall for me. Like, why would I leave? I can't leave. This doesn't make sense. I have children. I have to think about this stuff. And then um, the other thing is realizing that my deficits weren't only deficits. So I'm someone who's a big thinker Mm -hmm. and a mover and a shaker. Um, You know, in school, I was, I was labeled with ADHD. I've got a lot of ideas, right? I'm very creative. And I would get stuck when I couldn't manage the details of my life. When I was flying here, flying there, all over the country, trying to get back, get my stuff packed, make sure that, you know, just the details, like make sure to get my flights, all the little tiny minutia. I wasn't good at the minutia. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, there's no way I can run a company when minutia is not my jam. Like, it's it's not a thing. You have to be good at everything in order to run a company. Um, and I got really stuck. Like, so the negative thoughts were, you know, see, you, you can't do that. When I would when I would screw something up, like, uh, well, I've had big screw ups. Like, I've not showed up to a presentation before <laughs> when the room is filled with people. Oh really recent. God. Yeah. No, sorry, Bosies. You know. <laughs> Um, and so you know, who you, are. <laughs> you know who you are. And if you're listening, I've apologized a lot. And I'm, anyway, my point is I've made big mistakes and they usually come from being overwhelmed mm-hmm. with creating this new company and this business and, um, all that comes with it. The other thing is I'm really multi-passionate mm-hmm. and a lot of people think, you know, you've got to have one track and one thing. And so the way that I use my energy is I have 
a podcast. I have a blog. I've written six books. I have 30 articles. I've, um, I present all over the country. I keep, I love to work, right? And I'm writing a children's book right now. And, you know, I'm writing a book on organizing. Like, woo, I, I love to juggle stuff, but I lose details. And so the, the negative thought, the negative worry is when I would drop the ball, it was be, it would be a giant, see, you can't do it. Yeah. Like the evidence. Oh, there's the evidence. See. Yeah. See, you can't do it. You, uh, you know, everyone was right about you, you know, so I was always considered flighty in, in school and all these kind of mm-hmm. things. And, and everyone was right. Um, this isn't something you can do, right? Here's what I've learned my way around. If you hear weird noises like an alien, I have a French bulldog asleep on the couch <laughs> making these like, choking noises. So it's, there's no worries. Don't worry about it. But, um, you know, what I had to do, you know, being considered someone who is flighty and not being able to manage the details is I had to work around those things. Just like I teach people in inclusive education, mm-hmm. when a student has a deficit, it doesn't matter to me. We got to figure the work around. Mm-hmm. So if they can't read on level, then how do we have an access point to the thing? So for me, I would decide if I'm going to delegate it, right? If I, can I hire someone to do it? Um, how do I clear the decks to do the work that I love? The work I love is presenting this to schools and districts. The work I love is inspiring teachers to do what they know already is the right thing to do. Um, that's what I love. And so the more I do that, the more I clear the decks of all that stuff, the better. Um, and Liz, Liz Bremer will not like that I'm telling you this, but because I don't know if she wants more clients, but she's someone who is an organizer. Yes. She was here today, and I thought to myself, what did I do before you? Mm-hmm. Because she's someone who helps me manage all these tiny tasks mm-hmm. and keeps them all going, and then I can do the work. You know, I was yesterday in uh, South Carolina doing a court case, right? So I'm just – I can do the work because I know underneath the systems and structures are in place. She's my your point, net. She's my net. And <clears throat> my point is for people who have fears, whatever they are, so you're going to have a deficit. I've got, I got a lot of them. I'm sure you may too. Oh, totally. We get stuck with those deficits thinking, "Mm mm-hmm, that right there. When I see that failure, that means this isn't for you. And instead, all it is is a problem-solving thing. When you see that deficit, don't ignore it, right? But instead, what systems and structures do you have to put in place? And if you can't hire people yet to do it, who can help you? How can you get the support? I love the uh, how if you can't hire yet, because sometimes you can throw money at a problem and it, it just goes away. And that's so wonderful. But but what I think creative women forget, and this is where they get in the weeds, they forget to ask for help. They forget that many, many, many people want them to succeed. And it might be your best friend. You know, it might be uh, somebody in your family. It might be not, it might not be somebody you have to pay, but you you do have to ask for help. And it's not a weakness. Just like we wouldn't say it's a weakness in our kids. Right. You know, if my son is not strong in math, for example, you know, I, I don't think there's something wrong with him. Right. Exactly. And although if like, for example, if I try to try to um, get a flight, it's likely that I'll get it for the wrong year or the wrong month <laughs> or the wrong day, and which is a real problem, like in my day to day life. Right. And so again, it's like there's a travel agent. You figure out the people, which that's not expensive, but someone who's managing those details for me so that I can just, just stay in my zone of, you know, genius that yes. who says zone of genius? I'm trying to think of it. Gay Hendrix. Yeah. Gay <laughs> Hendrix. And so this concept of zone of genius, stay there as much as you can. And underneath that, all the things that you're not good at attend to them, figure them out, but it's not a sign that you shouldn't move forward. Right. When you were moving forward and you decided to embrace the deficit and and put your team members into place, um, there are little teeny tiny shifts that we have to make because life can't stay the way it was if we want it to be different. So what did you have to move around besides getting your team? Did you have to make any, did you have to give anything up or stop doing something or start doing something else to make your dream real? Yeah, Jen, I had to give up some things like insurance, like safety, like those kinds of details, you know, your TIA craft, all the things that feel like safety. And then these are dumb things, Jen, but for me, it was big. 
you know, my SU email, how will that work? My calendar, how will that work? I know it seems weird, but no, I, I remember think- you and I having this conversation a year, uh, February of 2017, we had this conversation because you, that was a big deal for you. Like, no, 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 no. But this is where my email comes in and right. it's going to do my flights for me. I remember having this very conversation. Right. And because I'm, because I operate at 200 miles an hour, really, um, these things were insurmountable to me and I had to, and I just thought to myself, these are problems to solve. Um, and when I put my team together and I would say, here's the problem, um, people are like, yeah, that is a problem. Let's, let's, let's ask the question. How do we shift this? How do we change this? I've set up your Gmail. It's ready to go or whatever. And, um, and don't forget your kids in that team of people. So Jen, before you said it's your best friend, it's my children are, are such fabulous supports to me, but I have to say to them, here's a challenge and here's the support I need. Right. Yeah. And for example, I was doing this big presentation at um, this summer and they were like, I don't know how to do Twitter. Right. And Sam, my son, who's a teenager is like, Oh, I'll set up your Twitter account and then I'll maintain your Twitter account and I'll help you. You just tell me what you want to do. And you know, and Ellis found a filter that you can put on. So everybody at the conference, it was 500 administrators and everyone at the conference had a cute little filter that they could put on their Instagram thing and send it out. Right. Those kind of things, I, I, they're not my jam, but my kid, they're my kids. Are they, are they out for hire those? Cause I mean, so many women are intimidated by the, um, the tech piece. So it's cute that you said that because some, Sam also does a lot of my photography and, and so does Ella too. And so, um, they recently, someone said, I love your picture. I said it was my kid. And so they hired them to come. And the fun part of it is, is if you're someone who's really comfortable around kids, your pictures look more natural because your face is more natural, right? You're not, anyway, it, it, it was great. So they're sort of for hire, but mostly they're in school. So. <laughs> Before you gave up all of the comforts and coziness and the, the, the retirement, the insurance, the email, um, and you went through this hard time. If you could go back and talk to Julie of two years ago, what do you wish she had known or believed? I wish that she or that I knew that being my whole self was actually the key to it all. What I mean is I thought, boy, I better show up polished. I better not screw up. I better, I better, I better, which is true. Of course, you want to be respectful and responsible. But what I had to do sometimes is say, so this isn't my area of expertise, but this is. Mm -hmm. And I had to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. And I found with all, you know, so all the listeners on the podcast and all the people, they really hear my vulnerability and my faults because I go ahead and tell people. And that makes them go, oh, me too. Okay, good. Okay, I can connect to that Um, because we too often – show up with this very positive profiled pic, you know, who we are and this is what we look like and this is what we do. And in reality, it's usually a lot less pretty than that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm only going to take it back to kids with disabilities for a second because it it rings true for this. So think about this. Like if you have a kid with an IEP, we document all their faults, flaws, problems, challenges, et cetera, right? And when I'm talking to educators, I say in this big room of people, raise your hand if you have anything you've ever done that you're not proud of, right? So, you know, 100% of the people, like a lot of people raise two hands, right? And then I say, right. And so if you're a student with an IEP, that's been documented. Your story has been told for you. And it precedes you. So here's this kid's IEP. Now you get to meet this kid. And that's a really flawed way of thinking. Instead, I like to restory for kids and restore them. And so the same is true for us. I don't want to always provide this, like, this is who I am. Isn't it amazing? The veneer, like the polished veneer. It's hard. Yeah. You know, it was scary when I made this leap. I, I, I probably clung to the rock, you know, for far too long until my fingers were bleeding. And I was like, okay, I'm going. I think I'm going. I think I remember talking to you saying, I think I'm going. But, you know, you were like, when? I was like, maybe next, next week. Um, yeah, so so Jen, what I wish I would have believed or what I wish I would have known is that being your whole self is the only way to be. Um, and it's actually the key to your success. Yes. And I was having a conversation today with a client. She lives in the UK and their culture is a little different than ours. And I'm learning a lot about their culture as I, I coach her. And uh, the, the, I feel like in America, 
this this idea of pulling back the curtain, you know, the uh, pulling off the veneer, is starting to take mainstream. And a lot of the a lot of the people I surround myself with are much more authentic and vulnerable, and that's just what I enjoy. I'm not saying everybody is like that in America, but it's it's becoming more the norm. And she was talking about how it's really not the norm. I was having a conversation with a woman in Norway who said the same thing, like it's not okay to uh, show the real you. There's this, this, um, you know, this, this highlight reel that you, that they embrace as a culture. And so, um, I love this idea of, I wish I had known that it was okay to just be me because that's what your, your product doesn't sell and your service doesn't sell. Like people aren't buying that they're buying the person who is, who is presenting it. And people want what you have. They could read your books and they could listen to your podcast, but they want you in person because of everything that you embody. And when you come into a room, you make everybody feel at ease about a subject that is kind of diseased, you know? (laughs) So you you just do this, this, you just show up. And Mm -hmm. I, I just, I want to do these interviews because I want to encourage more specifically women. I would love for men to do it too, but I'm really drawn to work with women, um, to show up. You know, the showing up piece is, is sort of helping me remember another really big fear for me. And it's, um, there was a sort of invisible panel of colleagues in Mm -hmm. my head. (laughs) <laughs> that were I remember this yeah that were constantly you know and I say invisible because that's true it, you know I was imagining what will people think if what will people think if what if this what if this because I was imagining these sort of not real people judging me for changing or making a, a shift or a change and so the other things that I had to do um, were really confront that is anyone really that concerned about what I'm doing? And the answer is no, (laughs) right? People aren't staring at me wondering how it's going. People are doing their own thing in their own life, in their own world. And so I just had to get really clear with myself that that's a lot of probably negative Mm self-talk that was looking like other people in my mind. Mm -hmm. In a reality, um, no one really cares what you're doing. And if they do care, that's their problem, right? Right, if right. they if they were judging you for leaving your cozy position, if they were judging you for making more money than they will ever make, if they were judging you for having a bigger impact than they can ever have, that's on them. Right. It's they're just uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that you have to take on their discomfort. Right. And so the reason when you said women and men, I, I you said you know it can, men can do this, but so can women. I was thinking about the gendered norms around being a woman, yes. and I was thinking about when you shine too bright. Yes. Many people say, hey, tune it, turn, turn it down. down. Yeah. You know what? You're, it's uncomfortable. Like, we don't like to see that, right? Um, you're making so, everybody else feel bad. Right. Yes. And so, um, that kind of thinking is very gendered. Mm-hmm. And people, women in particular, have to listen carefully to those thoughts or those, those worries in their head. Name them, look at them, and see if they're even real. Um, because a lot of it is a societal construct of that's gendered, right? It's very gendered. Yeah, I don't really see men having these conversations. Men have other struggles. When I coach men, they have completely different struggles. They can't yeah. access emotion. They don't know when to take time off. Like they have other struggles, but this does not seem to be a struggle. Like uh, they're going to show up and be their whole self, mm-hmm. but they're the women are really struggling with this. Right. And it says unapologetically piece, right? Yeah. So that's the piece is that for so long when I present in a big group of people, I say something like, you know, I'm Dr. Julie Costin. My, my kids, um, introduced me to their, to their teacher and said, I'm a doctor, but not the kind that helps people. Right. I say that (laughs) and I get a great laugh and it's really because I'm worried about, do you see what I mean? Oh, like who worried. does she think she is? Oh, she's got a PhD. Oh. We only have master's degrees. Oh, she's had it. Like she, it's the hierarchical. Yeah. And I need everyone to know that I do not care. I, I couldn't care less. Yeah. And I think it's like both good and bad, right? It's a great way to, to connect to people. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, I think, wow, so many people aren't apologetic for their credentials. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and so that it's just this, I always am watching myself and thinking that was an interesting choice, right? Yes. And that awareness is everything. Like that is the foundation for everything. We only make changes when we're aware of them. Yeah. So given everything that you've done, I'm curious, where do you want to take inclusive schooling? What do you, what do you envision for your business? What's next? Yeah. So, um, this is a what's next and it's a how to, if you don't uh-huh. mind both, because I think it's really helpful. Yes. So, um, how I plan is I plan in 90 day increments. Uh-huh. Okay. So I do these 90 day plans. It's simply a piece of paper and I've written all the plans and goals. I'm sure Jen, you've seen my 90 day lists and plans, but essentially I like to think 90 days out. And then I also like to do big long term planning. Mm-hmm. And what I find is when I have really measurable goals in 90 days, I can accomplish those things. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the kinds of things that I want to do next, um, I really want, so the big, big goal is change the face of special education to be from a deficit oriented perspective to a positive oriented way to look at human beings and diversity. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we stopped even saying special ed, general ed, and we start to just really talk about what's, I call it just education, meaning justice oriented education so that Mm -hmm. we educate all people together. Um, that's my big, big dream. And I'll do all the work necessary to really, you know, I'll probably work to the end of my day is doing that work. Um, and then the fun part for me is the creative pieces. So what's my next avenue? Um, right now, the children's book that I'm writing called The Too Much Unicorn. Oh, I might only write children's book for the rest of my life because I am having so much fun. So I'm writing it with my friend, Caitlin Karen. Um, and we're already at the illustrators. It was in my last 90 day plan. Of course. And I was, was like, I was like, write a children's book. And so literally it's at, it's being illustrated right now. And I can hardly wait for it to come out. I'll tell you the brief concept is that it's a little girl who's too much all the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, there's us, the, the president of the United States is coming to her school and she wins the competition to tour, be the tour guide, but everyone's worried she'll be too much. Mm-hmm. So she meets the president and oh gives the incredible tour. And um, the president says, um, you know, does anyone ever call you too much? And she says all the time. And then she says, but when they say I'm too much, I realize that I'm too much awesome, too much sparkle, too much smart, too much, you know, right? So this little girl knows it all along. She doesn't need anyone to tell her. Yes. And the ending is amazing. Anyway, I, I can't wait till How the book is out. With, like it just channeled through you? Like it was just, e- was it easy to write? It was easy to write and maybe I'll just only write children's books forever because I'm so in love with this book and these characters and I, I want to show you the illustrations, but I'll show you later. Um, and they'll, it'll be out soon. Oh, um, oh my God. Of yeah. course it will. Also, yeah. I, when, when Julie and I mastermind, she, she gets down to brass tacks and she's like, Oh, let's do our 90 days to freedom. And like she pulls out her thing and we just make our 90 day plan and she makes shit happen. Yeah. It's scary how, how motivated I am by writing something down. Yes. Um, it's kind of a come hell or high water. This is going to happen. But the fun thing is the dreaming about it. And I guess that's back to your first question, which is like when you took this leap, you know, why did you take it? And it's because I can design my own life mm-hmm. on purpose. Right. So one of the things that people are looking at you and thinking right now is, oh, she she can do that. Look at her. She's got a PhD. People respect her. Like she's got so much energy. No, no, no. She's different from me. Can you, can you debunk that myth for us, please? Yes. I'll say a couple things. Um, I'm not different than anyone. And I really think the more that I do work in the world, I realize every single human being has gone through quite something, right? And I think everybody has had a similar amount of pain and struggle in their lives. It comes in different packages and different forms. And that everybody has um, kind of the same amount of spectacular in them. Mm-hmm. And it comes in different forms in different ways. And so that was my dog making that weird noise. Um, and so when you think about the big, beautiful pieces of every human being, when you focus on that, anything is possible. Mm-hmm. But when we get stuck in the fear, when we get stuck in the deficit, when we get stuck in the I can't, I'm not sure, I'm only a woman, I better, I better, I better, I better, I better, right? Should, I should, I should, I should, I should. I should, um, I shouldn't shine too bright. I shouldn't put this out there. What about the people who will? What about all that, that noise? Yeah. It takes a fair amount of self-confidence to say, 
go ahead, say what you want, but I'm going to create a life that I want to live. And I don't know why I'm so focused. My, my grandmother lives to be 103. I've got longevity in my life. I know I have a long time, but I feel like when I wake up every day, Jen, I'm like, what could I possibly do today? Mm. And I'm going to be honest, that's a new feeling for me. That wasn't my feeling when I woke up and I was a professor. Mm -hmm. Um, I was happy. Uh, I loved my job, but like, it's like a blank. Well, you know, Jen, every day I take a blank piece of paper and I write my get to do list Mm -hmm. and whether it's take the garbage out or, um, you know, all the, you know, this little list, Mm -hmm. I realize I get to do this, (laughs) right? I get to do this work. And, um, I, I can't explain the feeling inside of me and how different it is because I'm designing my life. Um, I'm not different than anyone. I've been through all sorts of hard stuff, right? So divorce and a new house and all the things that come along with that. Also deciding that I'm gay at age 36, right? That's a, that's, that's a, a one. that's like no joke when that's it comes to a big to one. It. Yeah, no, it was, it was not pretty and it wasn't something that I recommend to, you know, do, but I'm telling you that. <laughs> That's not on the pathway. If you're going to be gay, figure it out earlier before you get married to some man. <laughs> right. Please, because, I mean, oh, right? It, th- that was the hardest thing that I've ever been through. And that's to say, and I only say that to say everyone watching is going through their own personal hell in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think just being like, here it is. Here's my own personal hell, and I'm going to figure my way out. Mm-hmm. And it might not be pretty but I'm going to do it. I think that is something really important. I mean, I remember crying on the bathroom floor. It was the day that I realized that, um, that I didn't get paid in the summer at Syracuse university. So (laughs) as embarrassing as that is like George had handled that, like, you know, and all of a sudden I was like, wait, so what, what day do my checks come in the summer? And he's like, well, this, you know, the nine month contract. And I was like, Oh, shit. Yes. You know, I was like, Absolutely. I know that. Then I started, you know, my point is I'm stuck on the bathroom floor thinking, oh no, you know, and so please don't think that this has been a smooth and easy yes. trajectory. There have been plenty of bathroom floor moments and plenty of how am I ever going to do this? And plenty of what does everybody think of me? Yes. Um, and those pieces are really scary. I want people to understand that the light that you bring you know, that, that you design your own life, that you get to sparkle so big, it doesn't come for free. (laughs) And you've been doing the work and you've like, you're afraid, you were afraid and you've done it anyway. And every time you do it anyway, you earn some more armor or some more confidence to know, you know what, today I'm going to try to write a children's book. Let's see how that goes. Cause it's just like the stakes get higher, but it's like, so what? Let's, let's give it a shot. And I want people to know that if life feels kind of meh right now, like I hear this a lot from my clients, like um, everything should be good because on paper, everything looks good. I have the relationship. I have the house. I have the job. Like, why am I not happy? That's the itch that you need to pay attention to. And it's like good enough. But after a while, it doesn't feel good enough. It feels heavy and yucky. And if you want that spectacularness of your, the the, the spectacular that's inside of you to come out, the price that you pay is doing it alongside of fear. And I really want people to know that they can have what you have, that you and I are not so special. The only thing that differentiates us is we're scared and we do it anyway. And we don't, I, I will fall on my face. I do fall on my mm-hmm. face. I make big mistakes. And, and the more that I do this work, the bigger the mistakes are. So yeah. how about the phone call that says, hey, we're waiting in a room with 200 people. I think you're supposed to be presenting today. And I'm on my way to a massage. I screwed up my calendar, right? <laughs> um, and it's two hours away. And I'm like, uh, so that's an example of a very public, yes, embarrassing thing that happened last month. Mm-hmm. And um, the only thing we can do is do every day with, the best intentions that we can have Mm -hmm. and to apologize when we screw up and to, and to sort of have grace with ourselves, but also grace with every person that we come in contact with. And this is really important. When someone's rude to me in the highway or someone flips me off or, or cuts me off or whatever, I am working so hard on seeing that they're going through something Mm -hmm. and I have to give love back Mm -hmm. instead of, 
a response back that's defensive. Mm -hmm. The reason that matters is because we have to do that in the world in order to get that back, right? We have to say, I see that mistake and I love you for it and it's not a problem and we're going to move on. Right. It, it won't affect my, it won't affect me. It won't affect my, my day. I, um, I know that you are on your way to millionairedom. I know that that is happening for you. And every millionaire that I've talked to, they, the thing that they have in common is that they uh, really work to keep their mind clear of low energy, low vibe stuff. And exactly, you just gave an example of how that keeps your vibe, your mentality really in a high, clear place, which allows you to just continuously create. It's really hard to create when you feel bogged down. So that you are just, I, I just like, I'm so honored Thank you, Jen. To, to be friends with you. And I'm honored that you spoke to us today. And I am always so inspired by what you do. I'm honored that I get to mastermind with you. Like it's so fun, it isn't it? Takes me to the next level also. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. You've given so much like vulnerability, authenticity, so much great advice today and lots to think about. So I just thank you so much. This was really fun. Plus thank it was you. Really fun. Yeah, no, this was wonderful. So thanks, Jen, for the time and the energy today. And, um, you know, if I were to say anything to your listeners, because I know they're at some stage in the jumping, right? Yes. They're either they've left the rock, they're clinging <laughs> to the rock, they're, you know, I'm not sure. Um, this concept of jump and the net will appear is real. Um, you want to set yourself up for, a, you know, make sure you can be as safe as possible on that jump. Yep. But know that people appear in your life to support you in pretty magical ways. Mm -hmm. So if you're clinging hard, you might consider looking at that rock and thinking of jumping sooner because every day will get better and better. How can people uh, learn more about what you do? How can, especially teachers, uh, I know so many teachers who can benefit from your work. How can people get more of you? Um, so if you go to my website, it's called inclusiveschooling.com mm -hmm. and you can see everything there. So the books are there and the articles and, um, mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of online classes. The one that would probably resonate best with your listeners would be, um, 21 days to happier mm -hmm. teachers. Yes. That's just, that's incredibly fun, engaging, um, really affordable, uh, class that you can take. And it's just these 21 days of, um, inspiration for you, but also for your classroom, figuring out ways to create gratitude and love and stuff in classrooms. If you want a sample of the work that I do, I think the best thing is my most recent podcast. It's a two part. All my podcasts are 15 minutes long, awesome. but it's called the heart set of back to school. Ah. And it's episodes, I think seven and eight called the heart set of back to school. If you listen to that, that gives you a sense of what I do in the world. And then uh, my website can take you anywhere else that you want. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Take care. Bye. Bye.